Hello, so I've had this bench for two years pretty much now. And it served me well, but I'd like to build something custom to go in here. So I'm gonna get this taken apart. Then I can get it out of the workshop. What I'm gonna build it out of is some OSB. Now my plan is to base the new bench around these Clark tool cabinets. Machine Mart kindly sent these to me. And I say these because I've got two of them. And these are gonna be the heart of the workbench so that I can really neaten up my storage. I find under the workbench just becomes a dumping ground as if I've got drawers, I can keep everything neat. There's many different configurations of cabinet available, but what I've gone for is the five drawer option because you get slightly deeper drawers, which I think really good for power tools and clamps. In the bottom drawer, you've got a side handle that can go on either side. I'm not gonna put that on. And you've got the casters, which are a pretty key component on a roller cabinet. But again, I'm not gonna attach them because I wanna build this in to the workbench. So I've got a second one of these, and I want them to go back to back so you can access them from either side. To power the workshop, I use one of these EcoFlow battery banks, so I'd like that to go into the bench as well. So what I'm going to do is get everything laid out on the base, where it will go, and then I can work out how big it needs to be, get the track saw, and start making some cuts. If I was a bit cleverer, I'd have probably work this out on the computer on one of those sheet good cutting things to get the maximum efficiency out of it. But I think if I cut it along the length, then I'll have the top and the bottom out of one sheet. So that's what I'm gonna do. I want to take into consideration the height of the casters, the top and the bottom itself. I'm going to put an extra bit of wood in for the um, casters to go onto, and I'm going to put a top on it. So now, if my maths are right, I can get three bits cut. now but I can start getting it put together so let's pull this the bottom and then the sides so two of these are going to be obvious where they go Hopefully not that way up that way up because one will go on each end so let's get that done and then I can think what the next stage is Right, the ends are on, so my plan was to get the cabinets put in. And these were gonna add the rigidity. So the second divider will go along here, 
wedge this in place and that will stop the whole thing racking was my plan. But then I started to worry, is that enough? So what I did is with a bit of an off cut, it's not quite as tall as the cabinets, but that's fine. I thought that I could go in the back behind the two of these and give some more strength. Um, now I've got it in here, I'm not sure it's necessary, but I've cut it and well, what harm can it do? Well, actually I'll answer that right now. I didn't design it like this. I designed this whole thing as wide as two of these cabinets. So if I add an extra divider, it's gonna make the cabinets stick out the front a little. Now, if you were clever, you'd have worked that out beforehand or designed it on a computer, but I tend to make it up as I go along. So if anyone asks, I'm just gonna say it's a design feature. Right, with that bit in, I can now get the last upright. Again, if I get it the right way up, screwed into place. Now, I think I'm glad I've added that because it feels stiff already. Right, now let's just get the top bit screwed on. I want to attach some casters to the bottom of this. So I'd like the material on the base to be thicker so that I can recess the bolts. So, on the table saw, I'm going to rip down a couple of scraps of OSB. These can now get lined up with the edge and screwed onto the base. The Clark roller cabinets come with casters, so you could use those, but I've already got some heavy duty ones. So that's what I'm gonna use. I'm going to mark out from the inside where I want the casters to go. Then I'm going to drill down with a 25mm Forstner bit so that I can recess the head of the bolt. I'm now going to drill through the center points with a normal drill. I'm using M8 bolts, so I'm going to use a 10mm drill because that's going to give me a little bit of wiggle room to get the bolts in. Now I can get the casters put into place and wash it. And a nut, if I don't drop it, I've got another one into the little recess I've cut and get everything tightened up. We have a bench, now we just need a top for it. What I've got to make the top is some three by twos. 
I want the countertop to be 140 centimeters long so that it's gonna overhang at one end, but I'm gonna add on a couple of centimeters so that I can trim everything nice and flush afterwards. I'm gonna use the jigsaw to get it cut and then I can use the first one just to mark all the others and then get them roughly cut as well. I've got a pile cut to length, but three by twos have rounded off corners and I don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is rip off both edges on the table saw. I've got all the strips squared off. Now I need to get them laminated together to make a top. What I have when I moved house is some of this packing stuff. It's a bit like a, a cling film. I use it to wrap around my toolboxes. So I think I just to get that spread out on the top of this so that my bits of wood won't stick to it. With that protected, I can get my strips laid out, get some glue on, get them clamped together, and then I'm going to put some bits of wood on just to keep them all level. Building it on this bench is gonna work well because it's really easy to get clamps underneath so that I can keep this all level. Okay, that's a lot of clamps on here. So I think I will leave it overnight to dry and then I guess we're gonna come back and do some sanding. So, so I've left this overnight. Now I can get all this off and see how flat it is. Now, I know I said sanding would be the next job, but I think actually I'm gonna grab the track saw and trim the ends flush first. That seems more sensible. sanded so now I need to get this top attached so I'm going to line it up flush with this end and then it's going to overhang the other end because I want to store some bits under it so what I do I think I'll get it clamped into place so then I can get some screws driven up from the underneath top attached I can get some finish applied so I've got some pure tongue oil now according to this they recommend you thin the first coat down by 50% so that's what I'm going to do now for anything food safe I wouldn't do this but for workbench I think it'd be good 
Thinning it down should help it absorb quicker, but I want to build it up so I've got about three coats on here to give it maximum protection. So over the next few days, I'm gonna do that, and then we can get this thing finished. The finish is now dry on this. I've built up three coats so I can get these cabinets installed. Perfect, just need one exactly the same on the other side. So I built this kind of power tool storage thing, but it sticks out from the wall and I never put anything back properly. It's a bit of a dumping ground. So I'm going to put them all in the drawer and then all the power tools when I need them are just under the bench. On the other side, I'm gonna get some clamps. So I've put that charger in there, but actually I'm gonna get the eco flow into the gap. So I think screwing the charger probably got on the inside there and then the charger can easily plug in. <sighs> Find the keys. So it wasn't that long ago, I built these clamp racks, but I've been living with them for a while now. And what I realize is, Okay, they're on the wall out the way, but actually all this stuff sticks out, I'll tell you, 24 centimetres max, and actually the drills stick out a bit further when they were in there. So that really reduces the amount of floor space you have here, because I can never stand that close to this wall. But I was dumping rubbish under the workbench, so it'd be much better to actually store the clamps under the workbench and when I do clamp ups, glue ups, whatever you call them, they'll be right there. Now you might have wondered why I've got this overhang. And there's two reasons. The first one, I bought this old industrial stall at an antique shop. So if I want to sit out here in the winter, I can actually get my legs under the bench, which is so much more comfortable than pressed up against the side like I was doing. Now, the other reason though, is dust extraction. So I've got my little Bosch rack and I bought myself this new separator. I know they don't match, but I want for this one because it's so short, it fit under a bench as the one I've made with barrels and things, they're, they're way taller than the bench and you still need room for the hose at the top. So these are both on wheels. So I think I'm gonna get them on here with a couple of eyelets and some bungee cords so they're easily removable. I've got three eyelets on here. So with any luck now, bungee cords going around will just lock this in place. On my back. Yeah, I think that's gonna work. Right, I think the last job on this then is to get the EcoFlow put into its new home. So that's it all done. Got dust extraction, tool storage, power. I can move it all around. I'll be able to sit at it. Uh, there's a few things that maybe I still want to do, but I'm thinking about it. And that's, I think getting a battery charger attached seems obvious, there's some dead space under here and I need a vice. So the vice could either go on the overhang, but I think the vice would be better 
on this bit um, and I've got a choice of two sides, might even be tempted to have advice on either side. What luxury. Um, yeah, I think this is going to work great. So thank you to Machine Mart for sending me these Clark drawers. Uh, I'll put a link to them down below. I've actually got three drawers empty still as well, so uh, I'm sure I can fill them in no time. So thanks for watching. Thanks to my patrons, and please subscribe for more videos. Mm -hmm.